Uh, well, here we are, uh, second week of talking about McLuhan. Uh, first of two weeks, we'll just be breezing through. His um, book, uh, The Medium, is The Massage. This book was sitting around the house when I was a kid, so I have a certain uh, nostalgic uh, affection for it. Um, I think that, you know, I gave you readings like the first half of it this week, the second half of it next week, but there's no reason to follow that. It's not really, it's, it's meant to be kind of a nonlinear thing, right? Which is part of, uh, McLuhan's, uh, message is that thinking is becoming uh, less linear, less print like the logic of our thinking and perception is changing. So I would suggest just paging through it and having fun and looking at the pictures, you know, which is what I did when I was a little kid with this book, uh, not being able to understand a word of what was written, actually. And I just remember being fascinated by pictures like this, like, what the heck? It looks monstrous and awful. Is it a person's face? Uh, is it a monster? Is it a dead body? What is going on here? Um, but, you know, there's always, the, the book is filled with these little visual puns, and it bears just, just, you know, there's nothing deep really here, but it bears, you know, thinking about, you know, that, well, I mean, I, this is a face, but it's a face of, of, of somebody who is, I think, in one of those uh, uh, training things for fighter pilots or astronauts where they, they subject them to G-forces, you know, get them ready. See, I mean, that's a person's face who's, you know, multiple g-forces that's what happens your face you know goes back just like an amusement park rides or other experiences that you may have um and you know a little pun right um great little pun i love mcclellan he's mcclellan's a jokester uh, which you gotta love uh medium is the massage why can i not uh, yeah the massage and how? <laughs> the idea is that, I mean, what I've read, and who knows what's true with McClone and what's not, is that when he, he, he sent this book, uh, or a version of this book, to the printer, and it said the medium is the message, which is the original expression, and it came back a typo. The medium is the massage. And rather than changing it, McClone loved it. He went with it, you know made it the theme of the book, the massage, you know, I mean, this is a man who's being subjected to G forces, you know, just that's us subjected to the forces of modern electric media, right? We are being massaged, you know, uh, we are being, uh, you know, massage and how, and then this great quote from Alfred North Whitehead, um, where is the quote? Oh, yeah, the quote's actually in the very beginning. Uh, let's see. Uh, this edition of the book. Yeah, all media work us over completely. That's somewhere in the book. You know that we're being worked over by by media, by new forms of media. And, and again, in a, this sort of subliminal or semi-conscious or subconscious way, uh, we're being shaped by media. We don't even. It doesn't happen on the really on the rational level. It's not like somebody says something to us. We think about it. We critically examine it. We decide whether or not we, we agree with it. Uh, he's not talking about that sort of rational process at all, but rather a process that goes on under the level of rational thought, under the level of conscious perception uh, that we are being changed. And uh, he's a great lover of Alfred North Whitehead here. This is a book, I think, called The adventures of ideas, a wonderful 20th century thinker, Whitehead, the major advances in civilization are processes that all but wreck the societies in which they occur. You know, they, uh, Whitehead was trying to sort of talk about the adventures of ideas, the, the, the way that ideas have adventures, ideas have careers or histories in human history, on uh, how new ideas create new, new societies. and. You know, if you're going to create a new society, you got to get rid of the old one. Right? So various ideas, uh, for instance, the idea of uh, human equality or the idea of human rights, how or the idea that every human life or every human being has intrinsic value. That's a big idea. And I remember Whitehead talking about somewhere in that book, that, you know, that changed everything right? gradually. 
and uh, in changing everything, uh, creating something new, um, destroyed the old. So, I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, it's part of the thesis here, right? Uh, great stuff, you know. Uh, the medium or process of our time, electric technology, is reshaping and restructuring patterns of social interdependence and every aspect of personal life. Wow, that could be written today. He wasn't talking about the internet because there, there wasn't one. Sure, certainly there were computers uh, at this time. This is late 60s, I think it was written, but you know, computers were things that IBM had and big universities had. There were no PCs. There were, the average person that never touched a computer, didn't know how it worked, and they didn't do much. You know, They did scientific uh, research, they did uh, the kind of things. That, why were computers invented? Computers were invented to, you know, to for war. Right? We know that in America and England, they were invented to calculate uh, the, the things they were needed to make the atomic bomb in the Manhattan Project. Uh, they were invented to try to crack, um, you know, the the German and Japanese. Uh, not the Japanese, but especially in Bletchley Park, and the, the German uh, code, you know, I mean, uh, German secret uh, communication code, so we could we could spy on them, you know, I mean, the British could spy on them, you know, so, you know, he wasn't thinking about computers, he was thinking about television, radio, the telex, instantaneous communications, new world at that time. But it does, you know, the, the, the medium or process of our time is reshaping and restructuring patterns of social interdependence and in every aspect of our personal life. Boy, if he could have lived long enough to, to know about social media, I probably would have felt vindicated, right? It is forcing us to reconsider and reevaluate practically every thought, every action, and every institution formal, formerly taken for granted. I mean, my goodness, look at the contemporary world, look at the institution of, of government, look at the institution of, of newspapers. Um, you know, we are calling them into question. Uh, they are being called daily into question. In some ways they're becoming uh, antiquated. Uh, you know, think about trusting media sources now. Think about the war over so-called fake news. Um, this is happening because of changes in the media, right? I mean, it's not that, well, okay. Everything is changing. You, your family, your neighborhood, your education, your job, your government, your relation to the others, and they are changing dramatically. Wow. I mean, you know, obviously his context here, he's talking about specific things. It was the 60s when he wrote this, but uh, somebody said this today about, contemporary media and how they're shaping us, they would be, yeah, it sounds you know, very plausible. But Societies have always been shaped more by the nature of the media by which men communicate than by the content of the communication. And that's the medium is the message idea. Uh, so, you know, very interesting. Um, and let's see, what, what's the pun here? I don't know. You got to look at the pictures and think about them. Right? I don't know. Um, yeah, look at what he says at the bottom of this page. Innumerable confusions and a profound feeling of despair invariably emerge in periods of great technological and cultural transitions. I mean, wow. That does sound very contemporary, doesn't it? Our age of anxiety is in great part the result of trying to do today's job with yesterday's tools, with yesterday's concepts. This is, you know, McLuhan is not necessarily a critic of new technology. There are points at which he does you know, suggest the dangers of it, but in many ways, he's just sort of saying we have to move on. Um, we, our, our education of children cannot be the same in 1800 and 20, 2000, you know, I mean, uh, because the world that they grew up in is different. And if we try to do the tools, if we try to do the work of today with yesterday's tools, we are going to fail. Um, you know, I'll just, maybe make one more video. I don't want to 